What is up, party people, and welcome to the Honest Trailer Commentaries live for the MCU, I yeah. believe it is. Our 300th episode, spectacular. Yeah! Except for Endgame. Except for Endgame, <laughs> except for Endgame. I'm Spencer J. Gilbert, Joe Starr. Uh, I was gonna say Dan. Oh God, no! You're not Dan. No. Uh, Lon, That's you're not me. Dan either. I'm for the first Dan. time appearing uh, in front of the camera, the editor of Honest Trailers, yep. Kevin. Yes. Woo! Hey, everybody! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for joining us. You yeah, no are problem. thanks for having me. You're uh, Dan number two. Dan started as the editor. Yeah, uh, that's uh, true. Um, I won't say moved on to bigger and better things because you're doing the biggest and best things of all, which is turning our, our mess of yeah, uh, our garbage uh, script and notes into a digestible uh, three to seven minute <laughs> little <laughs> weekly web series. Yeah, um, yeah. I definitely. Uh, you guys just hand me the script, and I just have to try to bring it to life the best I can. In a limited amount of time. What's <laughs> <laughs> uh, the most layered, nuanced, very stressed amount? Yeah, very, very limited amount of time. Uh -huh. yes. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm. I have one thing. Coming in relatively recently and seeing the whole process, I think a lot of people, myself included, assume that it's a writer's kind of medium on trailers, but... No, it's an editor's it, thing. It really is yeah. an editor's thing when you see it all put together. Like, the jokes are one thing, but mm -hmm. they come together in how it's all sort of assembled, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, you guys just, you guys give me the blueprint and I just try to... Right. You know, just uh, structure... Build the city. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're making it happen. Um, for those of you who haven't watched before, hello. Uh, we will have some deleted scenes, uh, and there's a bunch oh, yeah. uh, at the end of this one. And also, because it's our 300th, uh, uh, we're doing some like fan overarching series questions. We're taking your questions. Uh, yeah. I got yeah. some that I like printing out here, but uh, fire them off in the chat. I will. They'll scroll right by. I won't pay attention to them, but maybe I'll scroll back and pick a few out at the end. Who knows? Uh, cool. Guys, we're talking the MCU. The 300th Always. Honest Trailer, we decided to just do all the things at once. We uh, typically tend to bite off more than we can mm -hmm. chew for not worth it rewards, because we could have just <laughs> done 300 Rise of an Empire and called it a day. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I, why did we do this? Because we're conditioning ourselves, Spencer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just as uh, I believe the tale is Honest Trailers was once every other week. Oh, it was whenever like there or was a movie worthy, worthy of it. To, yeah. oh. And then uh, uh, Defy, pre-fall, in their was like, wisdom. for one summer, we'd like to do it weekly. <laughs> just for fun. Just to test it out. Just and you to guys see were like, people okay. like it. Like, and then okay. it became weekly. But now, we used to do, we'll do a show or a big, th every now and then. Remember we used to do like super cuts instead of honest trailers? Like that was a nice yeah. week off. Right? No. <laughs> right? Well, not for Kevin. Not for Kevin. Yeah, no. <laughs> but, for but now uh, we've conditioned ourselves, I think because of like Doctor Who and yeah. Game of Thrones and we're just like, yeah, I Let's guess we're used to this now, I yeah. guess. Let's yeah. just do more. Yeah. Well, there's, I mean, we've expanded, like, Danielle and I sort of came on board to help. So I think now that there's more people. That's true. You, we can get a little ambitious in terms of, like, let's divvy up. You can do these three and these four. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I think maybe. But we've we've overcompensated by now making it much Even harder, harder. Way too hard on ourselves. By it, taking on huge It always projects. sounds like a good idea a month ago. Like, <laughs> right. let's do, like, there's fun things we haven't said about the individual Marvel movies. Let's do all the Marvel movies. Um, yeah, whoops. whenever you guys, uh, whenever <laughs> I see it on the schedule, like I see something like the entire MCU franchise, I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> all right. I'm yeah, start preparing right now. <laughs> I feel like the the Tim Burton one, Dan did start to have buyer's remorse yeah. by the end. Mm -hmm. Like with going yes. through every Tim Burton very movie, sad. Well, the last three or four was. That was all him, pretty much. Yeah, though, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just mean, took, I think took we, that one to the face. Yeah, we yeah. all watched like a I was song and tried to help out. Yeah, you were gone. Yeah. <laughs> I watched a bunch of Tim Burton movies and sent notes, but no, that was ninety percent of that one was mm, just guys, Dan. Sorry, but I was working on Mortal Engines. Oh, yes. <laughs> there, that was a big one. <laughs> yeah, everyone was clamoring for that. What if the cities? Move. <laughs> were they mortal? <laughs> Who's to say? Um, I still don't get. And Peter Jackson personally tried to explain it to me. What makes the engines mortal? Humble brag. Um, yeah. 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 I, I know Peter Jackson. Aren't we all at the end of the day? <laughs> um, I'm sure we're going to have a ton to say, and I want to save some room for fan questions at the end, so let's just dive into the MCU on his trailer. Pause when you have something to say, and let's go. This is people six years ago asking for Iron Man 2. <laughs> My first Australia, Iron Man 2. Oh. Really? Well, no Harry Potter. Robert Holpe graphic? Yep. In a world where a bankrupt comic book company sold the film rights to its best characters for peanuts because they thought movies would be a good way to 
some more comics. A young Pause. executive <laughs> will do what he can. The, the history of the MCU is kind of fascinating to me because Marvel was super bankrupt in the 90s and the people behind it, uh, everyone's favorite, Ike Perlmutter. Sure. It wasn't, a good guy. It wasn't just to sell um, comics because that wasn't where the profits were. It was toys. It was merchandising, merchandising, mm -hmm. merchandising, right. much like yogurt from Spaceballs. Where the real money for the movie <laughs> yeah. is made. Yeah. and Thanos the flamethrower. The reason, uh, Kids love this one. The reason we got Iron Man first uh, even though like Captain America seemed like they're the centerpiece of what they got because it was like Captain America, Hulk, Thor, Iron Man. Nick Fury, I think Nick was on Fury. that list. Yeah, yeah the, the, the original MCU characters is I did some focus groups and put toys of all of the characters they had the rights of in front of them and kids were like, Iron Man, Iron Man! Yeah, it's like a robot guy. Yeah, yeah robot yeah. guy. So yeah. that's why Iron Man was the first one to go into development. I had no idea. Yeah, it's funny. If you go back to that original article, like Variety wrote about, like, well, there's a Marvel and Paramount are going to team up and make some movies based on these old characters. They like they were explaining who these characters are because they assume most Americans don't know them. Like, yeah. he's like, Nick Fury, he's basically Marvel's version of James Bond. It's like, well, it's like a world <laughs> where yeah. people didn't know who Nick Fury was and it meant nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. The funny thing, I feel like if you put Nick Fury versus Hydra toys in front of people, they'd be like, well, this is just G.I. Joe's, which is broken because when G.I. Joe's was a line, Hasbro was like, Marvel, make this a story. And they basically use Howling Commandos and Hydra's and turned wow. it into mm -hmm. G.I. Joe and Cobra. Oh. So they oh. they shot Fury. I Pretty sure I just said something possibly very long, wrong on live TV. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's correct because oh, yeah. they also. It sounds right. I mean, yeah. it could be true. We're flying without a wire here live. Yeah, unlike, live. unlike this show, usually where there's lots of rehearsal and editing <laughs> yeah. and um, extensive yeah. notes, yeah. research. Yeah. Our CEO no. goes through and censors the whole thing. Yeah. 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 Hostile takeover. Cue the pyro. Damn it, you missed your a cue. Young executive <laughs> will do what he can with the rejects that no one wanted and do so well. They get bought out by Disney before it was cool. Yay! Hey. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. One company owns everything. Except for yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the MCU, a TV series made of movies about comic books where magic is actually science. Your ancestors called it magic, and you call it science. But not by magic, by technology. Magic. Science. But science. <laughs> there was a lot more uh, oh my God. of those that we just had to cut out. worthwhile organization. I didn't physically yeah, that makes sense. To create. And meet your typical MCU protagonist, a loner with no pets, no biological siblings, and whose only friends are their co-workers. Oh. Pause. Uh, you know, people could bring up fairly, you know, uh, Black Panther yeah, as a sure. biological sibling. He's the exception that proves the rule, I say. Um, yep. Well, it's you know? definitely like a pattern of the movie. You can't really deny that they're they're loners. They don't have family around them. They have like one friend. Like that's that's yes, Black Panther is sort of a little bit of an exception. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And there's also Hella, but mm, yeah, yeah, you're she's right. A half right. half sister, right? Mm, uh, they don't they don't have the same mom. mom. No, Freak is not. I'm pretty sure. I don't think they directly deal with this in the movie. No way. Those parents could have. The two of them could have produced Hella. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I've read that they are half siblings. So, but, I, but I would also argue that, but like, not. even though they're siblings, it's not like there's an interesting relationship or, or, or anything like there. Because we get into it later, too, but you know, with like all the weird, like, sexless romance and stuff, when you start to really strip it down and it's like, I am person man, and I have co-worker friends, and I am alone, and we kissed, and <laughs> like, they're yeah. all... <laughs> well, these, these movies have, uh, they have to service so much, and like, uh, introduce these characters and so much plot, like, giving them more than one friend, like, why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have time for that. I give them more right, than I mean, I think Ant-Man... needs to be co-worker. <laughs> Ant-Man, it came, like, kind of late in the series, and it really lays it out, it's like, it's, it's efficiency, it's just the law of, you know, like, you've got a certain amount of time, and so it's like, well, he just got out of jail, so he has a cellmate who's his friend. He's got this one woman who he sort of interacts with, mm -hmm. and he's got this one job to do. And it's like, yeah, movie's over. Yep. We're there saying they all need at least one rom-com basketball playing pal, is what we're saying. They do. You yeah. got to have your they Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> along came Polly. Brain dance! <laughs> uh, go watch uh, Along Came Polly? Yeah. yeah, it's along, but you really only need to watch that just one scene. Purely for the and, and the Pratt Falls. Scene. And the Pratt Falls. Yeah. All right, keep going. <laughs> whose personality can range from lighthearted quipster. I'm sorry, Earth is closed today. To stern, duty-bound military type. You get hurt, hurt him back. You get killed, walk it off. 
And on a long enough timeline, everyone really becomes a good two Marvel character types. Please, you've been to space. Follow along <laughs> on their hero's journeys, where after a motivating Uncle Ben situation, they'll get a transformational hairstyle, mm -hmm. cut some carbs, mm -hmm. and find the strength to boldly say their superhero name out loud. Um, Captain America. Now pause, the, uh, that Uncle Ben grid, I think that it goes by so fast, but it did shock me how many motivating mentor deaths there are, like, I could have told you that's a trope, but really yeah. every single hero, somebody they look up to dies very early on in their superhero career. I think some of that you do have to put, and and not to, like, great great guy, legend, icon, but some of that does go back to like Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. And, like these these stories had formats in their original versions. Uh, yeah, you think? So there's only so much. <laughs> but I mean, like, there's only so much in the movie. They can't change everything. Alliterative name. Uh, yeah. Blank. Mentor. Yeah. <laughs> like they. I, I just Frozen like, man. We we invest them with so much importance. I mean, people are spending you know weeks on these fandom pages, like tweaking, updating. Making it all like so perfect as they should, as they should. Not discouraging you, but in the you know like <laughs> Kirby and Ditko and Lee were like were scrawling that on a napkin. Yeah, they were in sitting in the, the closet knocking out eight of these in an afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Like they they weren't treating them as sacred, you know. No, rally. They had like, like every animal, every yeah. like physical uh, uh, element, uh, every race. <laughs> and they yeah. were just like mix match. Boom, boom, it boom, was the uh, it was the early version of the Twitter meme where uh, you, you finish sentences with an autocorrect. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's that's like, that's how they're making characters. He's a character and he's like a stick man and he throws sticks. Stick man. Yeah. Write uh, it down. Write what down. if the sticks were on his legs? Stilt man. Yeah. Stilt yeah. Man. <laughs> now we're cooking. <laughs> Anyways, keep going. I'm Captain America. I am Iron Man. I'm Thor, son of Odin. I'm Ant Man. I am Groot. Nick Fury. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. And weirdly, there's a bunch know, of characters um, who never say their I'm names, even though we all refer to them as, you yeah. know, yeah. Scarlet Witch or whatever. Who? But people say Captain Marvel is only Captain as Marvel. good as their villain. And thank God that's not true, or the MCU would be hot garbage. Thrill as they spare 10 minutes to establish a bad guy who's just like the hero, but evil. No, that's easy. Or mm -hmm. a faceless horde. Can feel bad if it doesn't have a face. Or mm -hmm. actually a pretty awesome character, and they're dead. But everyone knows the <laughs> yeah, real villain of the adults? MCU talked about that before. is dad. He was cold. He was calculating. He never were, told me uh, he loved me. Never this was a me good realization. In the trailer, people seem to like this one. You are wrong yeah. to turn your backs on the rest of the world. Everything I hear about myself, he told me. Of course, I have issues. <laughs> That's my freaking father. But like I'll all good moms, the dog and I will tear him apart slowly. The uh, the chat has pointed out that motivating deaths is uh, a Joseph Campbell thing. So congratulations, you red hero with a thousand faces. Have a star. <laughs> Well, I read Hero with yeah. a Thousand and One Faces. <laughs> so. A meticulously planned story told across 23 separate movies all about Thanos killing half the universe. Well, first he has to get an Infinity Gauntlet. No, not that gauntlet. I'll do it myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. And then gather the Infinity Stones. Well, Sam yeah, pause. To get so I think in looking into this, like, this was Joss Whedon just thought it'd be, like, cool. Like, it's amazing looking back how much this was kind of ad hoc and, like, in the moment that they were just kind of pulling out of their butts. Um, that he's like, uh, this would be like a fun only comic people know about. Mm -hmm. TV. Oh, the yeah. Easter egg of the. What's that? The Easter egg of the gauntlet. The gauntlet. Uh, well, the, the gauntlet and then just Thanos in general, of oh, like yeah. putting him at the end of, uh, uh, was it Avengers? The, Aven or, the original or the Avengers. Avengers. Even, yeah, and then it's like, they. At that point, there was no superstructure story to it. It was just like a little dangle. Well, like someone else could pick it up and run with it if they wanted yeah, to. They are definitely still kind of like, even with the first Avengers movie, it was still kind of like, we don't really know if this is going to work <laughs> yet. Yeah. And so, yeah, they put that in there. And then, because that, was that the last Paramount? Or was that? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Avengers, yeah. Because then yeah. I, it, it does feel like then Disney was like, so what's this purple guy thing all about? You guys got a plan in there? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> sure. No, no, he's a hastily uh, putting mean, together yeah. notes. I think probably also people responded so fine. strongly to the Avengers, they must have been like, oh, they, yeah, we got to keep doing this. They yeah. love this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it, 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 you can tell that suddenly they have to like, come up with a much larger overarching structure than they'd originally mm -hmm. planned. Although I think a lot of the, ex like, people assume that a better story would be if you sat down for like a week and like plotted out 500 movies. But a lot of the time you, you do kind of have to find the story in yeah, the telling. And you have like, to you know. at least give the impression that you're letting your creators 
own their own movies. Right. <laughs> like, have something. Because when you don't, you end up with, like, I think the weakest ones are, like, Iron Man 2, Age of Ultron, right. where it does feel like it's trying to service, like, a TV series plotline and, like, further along all these other plotlines rather than tell its own story. Yeah, I agree. Ultron especially feels like it's just, like, well, we got to introduce Vision. We got to introduce, you know, yeah. the Maximovs. We got to, you know, it's a lot of, like, table setting before you get to the movie. Yeah. Oh, that's a deleted scene. All right, oh, let's keep going. Ben gathers the Infinity Stones. Well, send proxies to get them. And he gives one away, but eventually he'll get the stones. Some Gunberg are stones. Point. While the other relics often appear as stones. He also changes color a bunch. <laughs> yeah, but then different shades of purple every time. the universe, which also doesn't make much sense. Oh, also, the timeline doesn't work out. Well, that was a real unforced error right wasn't there. So planned like, out after just all. don't put yeah, eight years just, later. Just, you know, yeah, yeah. three distinct just phases. Years the later. The pop yeah. song phase. The boundary pushing experimental phase. Then the woo, we can do no wrong. I'm a golden god phase. <laughs> and if rock docs have taught me anything, phase four will have the MCU puking in the gutter, wondering where it all went wrong. Journey we'll from talk the more farthest about that reaches the of Viking scene. space <laughs> to alternate dimensions to the wonders of Earth. I think, pause, uh, that, uh, that Viking space uh, joke kind of gets lost because it's yeah. like, it, I think Thor gets to, the, the Asgardians got to name like the nine realms. Yeah. So it's like, we, I guess the Vikings got there first, so everything is like spar time. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Every planet in the MCU is like some old Norse, like, oh, we've got to go to Vormir and Nevadalir. And like, there's no like, Pluto. Yeah, like they, they, yeah. They just Nothing abandoned. in like Chinese yeah, or no. uh, well, they, yeah, they got. I mean, it's Spanish. like I, I'm, I don't have a deep connection to King Louis because I grew up in Louisville. But like, someone got there and they were like, "We're naming this after all yeah. King Hall." <laughs> it's, like, it's just like all space is Viking space now. Yeah. I think if we treated, if the MCU uh, spent more time with like on the street level with with people, there would be a real resurgence of like paganism and like Viking religious belief because yep, they were right. They, they nailed it all along. Yeah. Was Thor, real. Odin, God of Thunder. I wrote a small book about it. I did. I wrote, I wrote a very long piece for fandom about, about this very thing. Like talking to religious leaders about like what impact do you think this series would have on Did you talk people's... to a Viking though? I did not talk to a real life. They're a little hard to track down. They're very busy pillaging. In their long boats. To, yeah. Always in a long boat, always pillaging something. Uh, but no, that, that uh, I think one interesting thing is that you know in the in the reality of these movies the idea is like well thor was never a god he was always an alien what you call gods we actually call right. strong australian men yeah, in and costume. these and these dumb vikings being <laughs> stupid and not scientific assumed he must be the god but of thunder to, but he calls himself that at some point doesn't he, he? Does, no yeah. he will later look cuz yeah. that's the whole thor ragnarok is he's god of thunder and then he's, he keeps on lord of thunder right. uh but no so i think that idea well, he is a god of again yeah yeah, if you accept that, that then doesn't that kind of ruin every world religion? Because it's like, well, wasn't every religious figure a god just an alien? That like, you know, how how could you believe any? It's also it also gets to be a weird slippery slope because it's like, does this mean the ancient aliens guy was right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, in the in the was everything just aliens coming down in, in the, the MCU? Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when they come out with the Eternals, like uh, the Angelina Jolie is gonna build the pyramids and like it'll all be. Yep. It's all there, man. It was yep. all all apocalypse. <laughs> oh, boys. <laughs> Ibn Sur. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be great. All right, keep going. Alternate <laughs> dimensions to the wonders of Earth. Oops, that one's Utopia. And Marvel, <laughs> really and how everything still kind of looks and feels the same, as visionary indie filmmakers are funneled into the Marvel I think Ragnarok's the exception to the rule. digital but video where yes. everything is CGI. Every story Agreed. is full of sexless romance yeah, I, that I never think takes off. Ragnarok just adds some no, color. No, That's what... The the Pause. Pause. The, yeah. The, we're, mm. For a series with so many physically perfect people, this is like uh, yeah, just not a sexy. Why don't they all <laughs> f on screen for us? <laughs> no, it's just like real, it's like yeah. it's. I don't know. There's just something we. It's like uh, there was busy the world. Oh, we very to busy. Save the I world. Assume, I assume they pork on their own time. Like yeah. the, you know, it's the, the these movies would be really weird if they had a sex scene in them, wouldn't they? If Scott Snyder or uh, Zack Snyder directed a man, <laughs> just <bother>. hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, a, lot of them are, hallelujah. a lot of them are like People Doctor Strange, where it's like the implication is like he at one he's not 
asexual or sexless. Like at one time he had a relationship with mm-hmm. Rachel McAdams, who yeah. I don't I don't remember her character's name. I had a girlfriend. She her was her name a, was Christine. In from the Niagara Falls area. <laughs> but now but she lived in Canada. You can't see her. We dated over spring break. She's yeah. very busy with her successful nursing career <laughs> slash being a model. Uh, but they're they're always in like a sexless period of their lives. Yeah. You know, they've entered this time where they're just focusing on the, superheroism. The mission. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Which is fine, but they're like, Jessica really Jones the, the most compelling like romance is like Stephen Bucky or Stephen <laughs> Peggy, who's been dead I think for Tony, most of Tony movies. and Pepper, I guess, would be your other one. She's that's weird. She worked for him. Like I, I in, in my rewatch, like that they yeah. really gloss right over that. That like well, it's, it's his assistant, okay. and he's like, "Will you uh, get me this? Uh, get me that? Get me this? And uh, let's make out." <laughs> yeah, in the first one, especially, there's a lot of like, "No, Mister Stark, I work for you," and that yeah. would not be appropriate. Which by two and three is just like, "Nah, yeah, nah get over it." <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep going. It's violence. <laughs> He's fine. more than He's a fine. couple of forehead scrapes. All that for a drop of blood. Lifeless soundtracks with more dad rock than you Ooh, can see the middle screen. I don't, right I don't, right. I don't agree so that that's lifeless. Yeah, you said Modern call it a lifeless soundtrack. Guardian Troubleman soundtrack. Yeah, look, I don't know. Like that. That's basic. That's a. Uh, that's that's like that is pretty basic. Or two for Taylor Swift for guys who wear faded jeans. The chain is a class. Have you heard of a band called Led Zeppelin? There's a lot of good songs. And there's a whole generation that does not know this. It's like Bumblebee. Start. Pause. Pause. The Bumblebee soundtrack is annoying. No, I agree. And I guess we've reached the point where we're so old um, that this stuff is new again. Um, uh, but the Bumblebee soundtrack, it, to me, is just like. Now that's what I call yeah. the 1980s. It, it, it just it these feels are, like they went to the Wikipedia page for the year of the movie set and just picked like yeah. eight of the top 20 songs. I know they're good songs. I heard them on the radio every effing day in carpool. Like they're not, you're yeah. not these are not deep cuts you're finding. It's like if today, uh, well, I don't know who's popular today. Ryan, come on. who who's, the, who are the kids listening to? Mar- marshmallow? Is yeah. there a marshmallow? Ariana Grande. In 20 years, when you see uh, some like nostalgia milking movie, and it's just like like seven Ariana Grande like Lil Yachty Beyonce songs in a it's row. It's gonna be all DJ Khaled songs. Yeah. Yeah. Every song in the soundtrack's gonna start like, another one! Like, oh, There's gonna be so much BTS on the Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy reboot. It's like, this guy was uh, the best music in 2018. Anyways, music supervisors, they uh, listen to him. I just, I, th- when a movie does a really good job of matching the on-screen action to the song, it's so delightful that you wish that they were, like, Every needle drop should be like that if you're gonna do one. Don't just do them just to do them. Yeah. Like, like just Captain a, Marvel. With yeah, them. I was gonna say Just a Girl and Captain Marvel is a great example of like the music fits the moment. It's the right vibe for when it happens. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna <sighs> say the opposite. Oh, the the No Doubt song in Captain Marvel. Yeah, I didn't like that. Oh, well, I thought that was pretty good. I would have gone Spider Webs. Like <laughs> or don't speak. Okay. Actually, Sunday don't, morning. They're saving that for Far From Home. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. I think don't like. I'd go, don't uh, speak would have been speak. hilarious to that? just her beating the hell out of me. Never had to knock on wood. <laughs> By the bus. <laughs> 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 Have you ever been close to tragedy? Ha! She should have just started skanking, really. That was what was missing. Chumba Wumba. No! I get knocked down. Why do we always end up talking about ska on this? Joe, I blame you. Keep going. I mean, more a real big Boston. fish. <laughs> that man is playing Galaga. Ever seen Beyonce. Movie, We're getting no help from Flash. Let's face it, Boss Tones, 1997. <laughs> I can footloose the movie. Exactly like footloose. Squidward Grimace. The gloss of personal flying monkeys. I understood that reference. <laughs> Blue Lagoon. Gandalf <laughs> and Harry Potter. Oops, that's pixels. <laughs> so settle in for an interconnected movie verse that had a 1 in 14 million 605 shot of working. But those odds didn't stop every other studio from awkwardly mashing their IPs together like a junior high dance floor, leaving yep. Marvel as the only one standing in a dying industry. I could do this all day. But launching a whole new industry of Marvel movie news. Thank you, Marvel. And analysis, mm-hmm. channels that just complain about you. Marvel movies, <laughs> and even sure, comedy right. web series that would have died a long time ago if Marvel movies weren't so popular. <clears throat> so one way or another, in the end, everyone's getting paid by Disney. You shills. Yeah, well. 
what happens when one company runs the Science entertainment industry. Jesus. It could achieve heavy ion fusion at any reactor on the planet. Quantum phase when an object moves <laughs> through different states of matter. An einstein rosen bridge is a theoretical connection between two different points of space. I don't know. The quantum system would revert back to separate so states of matter. So many smart people. Oh my god. We, we didn't even include Peter Parker in this. Peter Parker, a rocket raccoon. Yeah. There's like other physics. geniuses Plus, that we didn't even get to. Jumping yeah. out of airplanes. Do this one. Uh, that is a spaceship that Drax is jumping out of. <laughs> yeah, I cut, yeah. Out, I cut out a couple helicopters. Oh, thank you, oh, thank color. you. Leg scissors. <laughs> we should have done a whole rainbow spectrum, like yeah. on Roy G. Biv. Yeah, Kevin G. Yeah, Kevin. <laughs> there was only like two yellow people. <laughs> I never Honest realized, I, this was a revelation for me. I, I knew this was like Black Widow's go-to. No, everyone I, no I did not realize how many characters did the leg scissor. Yep. On the train work, people like that UFC. Audis. Big Audi Ram integration. Man. Then you get a Hyundai and you like it. Dual wielding. I just like the Audi thing. It's, it's always like Tony Stark pulling up in an Audi like oh, yeah. badass. Uh, pause. In, uh, in, I think it's Endgame, when he pulls up uh, to Avengers headquarters yeah. in an Audi. It's uh, an electric car, but nobody. <laughs> I guess they didn't think anyone would like think it's cool if it didn't make a lot of noise. So they piped in engine music yeah. when Tony's yeah. going around. So Audi calls the shots. Badass in his yeah. Audi. Yeah, yeah Audis. Audis. They seem like nice cars. I don't know. It's not a knock. It's, it's just weird. Like he would be driving some like concept car. He'd, he'd have like a Stark mobile. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, Tony Stark. Or he wouldn't just be some yeah. uh, you know off the lot like last weekend he went to the Audi dealership. Yeah, yeah. Like, I make, feel like make me a deal. At this point, Tony Stark has like. Uh, like pumps shoes where he's like ch -ch -ch, and like a car yeah. grows out of his feet. Right, no, it feels like he <laughs> like, just goes into that? that basement for an hour and is like, ah, I thought I'd make a car. Isn't there a <laughs> gif for like, isn't there like the Wonder Twins where the guy turns into a car? I'm Probably. just gonna type di yeah, guy turning so. no, into one, one car. No, one of the Wonder Twins turns into water gif. stuff and the other turns into animals, right? Here it is. Uh, uh, this my, is good content for everyone. Yeah, my reaction when I turn into a car. Form of car. <laughs> that is. Anyways, a, yeah. I'll post this later for you guys to see. But for it's now, a, a gif of a man turning into a car. You just did a reaction <laughs> video, Spencer. <laughs> Spencer react, reacts to one or two things. I Google. Oh, uh, the the chat meanwhile has been happening this whole time. I imagine I should have been checking. Mm. All right. Well, uh, let's continue ignoring that. Keep going. Dick measuring. I mean, you have me. a big gun, you are not the big gun. Tony, don't be oh, jealous. No, it's Every not. time. Raging fire. Do I like smoldering fire? My record? 21 feet. Not bad. You? 65 feet. Whoa. Yeah. Huge. 65. <laughs> I love Iron Fishburne's Man delivery right there. You get an Iron Man suit, and you get an Iron Man suit. Weird non Stan Lee cameo. Why don't they all get Iron Man suits? Good idea for an electric jet. Uh. Weird. Uh, Grumps, did you know I was in uh, Iron Man 2? <laughs> Isn't that cool? So, all right, pause. Um, this one's on me. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, I see the top comment is, uh, is uh, why didn't you put Yondu's, Yondu's arrow in there? Uh, Guardians 1 was my film. I uh, slipped through the cracks. Sorry no, about I that. actually, I thought of it at one point, but I wasn't. Oh, it's Kevin's fault. Um, Kevin? I can take the blame. Kevin, why did you screw up? Well, <laughs> here's, as we, uh, actually, as I was putting those together, I, I didn't think of it then. I thought of it, like, later on as I'd moved past it. And then I was like, oh, I gotta remember that so I could toss it back in there. And I'll also take, I put it in brain. the, when I first suggested multi-hit combos, I did make a little note there of some of the other movies that I knew they were in. So this is like a system-wide organizational yeah, failure. And I'm not sure I included Yondu you know in though? there either. I'm gonna throw this out there. It's uh, Joe's fault. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Here's what I'll say. Uh, pointing out the thing does not mean we include all of them, because in the video is a lifeless, 45-minute, shapeless, formless thing. And Fair, but Joe, in the good, some, I'm not saying it's often. We can often. put out a supercut. Sometimes the comments are right, very rarely, in this one instance. <laughs> Almost this one instance, really. uh, they are correct. We totally dropped the ball on Yandu's arrow, because his whole thing is like, it hits a lot of people at once. Yeah. It, uh, All they, he has to do is whistle. It just whistle. He just knows, I don't you know You just how that drew works. an arrow. I just want, like, is that... <laughs> Do you, <laughs> do you sketch your guilt to emphasize my money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Failure. <laughs> Deals of shame. Uh, anyways, keep going.
This was actually the shot that made me think of multi combos. Mm. Was the the ancient one. Yeah. She just like chucks her disc around. Are you sure you know how to fly this thing? <laughs> Do you know how to fly this thing? Uh, we'll see. I thought you said you knew how to fly this thing. I said, how hard could it be? Here, yeah, take the wheel. No, I don't know how to fly one of these. Are you a scientist? <laughs> Use one of your PhDs. And never forget That's a great that from yeah, all no. of Guardians 1, they're sitting in Star Lord's <laughs> jigs. <laughs> Woo! Hey, I got it in. <laughs> that was the biggest thing that stood out yeah, to pause. me. Yeah, pause. Do we want to talk about the saga of Star, War Star Lord's jigs? Yeah, yeah well, I think we have to. That was the, the, just rewatching it, like, it, that was like a, whoa, that got my attention line. Like, they snuck in a jizz joke in a, in a, the, Okay, hey. Hey. hey! hey! We were just talking about Star Lord's jizz before the uh, stream went down. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Let's pick uh, up on that. Let's keep going. Yeah, although, side note, JT, we cannot see the honest trailer anymore no, on the screen. I assume you will take care of that while we continue yeah. our talk of Star Lord's jizz. This is Star Lord's close up of Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> it's all purple, so we're inside this Thanos' is what butt. And they would see moments before <laughs> expanding <laughs> and saving the universe. <laughs> I wish that happened. Uh, but yeah, that was, the, that was the big standout moment, and you guys can maybe share yours on rewatching. Uh, well, we divvied it up, but a lot of the MCU yeah. movies yeah. It was um, uh, that line about saying that if uh, you shine a black light in here, it'd be like a Jackson Pollock painting because that is disgusting, and uh, they are all sitting in. Yeah, uh, the he's been yeah, he's quills. been ejaculating yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> they this, sell toys of the mall. Yeah, yeah. Like, this went through a lot of iterations because at first we were like, oh, do we start showing everyone who's ever sat in a guardian ship? But then it was like, remember at the end they built a new one. They do build but a new can one. Can we assume that he treats all of his ships like this? I'm hoping he's going to be more respectful of the Benatar because when he had the Milano, he was alone. He was just yeah. cruising through the galaxy by himself. Now he knows he's got a team. You know, I just realized um, when I went back and for that joke and was rewatching that scene, if you listen closely to that conversation where he's trying to give his big speech and stuff, you can actually hear a couple like him just. There's, it's quiet, and all of a sudden he takes a little step, and it's just a squishy sound. No, what? I swear, it's no. Like twice. <laughs> oh, I swear. That's too far, James. Gunn. I was gonna say like we should add that as a hilarious joke, but I guess they, <laughs> one step ahead. They did it for us. Guns wow. one step ahead of you. No, wow. yeah, go back and watch that scene of his uh, his uh, big. Uh, Important speech to try and get them back to yeah. together. Maybe he should have been fired. <laughs> Maybe they were right the first switch. time. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, um, the other thing that stood out on should my rewatch was on um, Reed's watch. Uh, was uh, what was it? Oh, that in the Avengers when Iron Man comes in to save the day from uh, Loki in that like uh, plaza in in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, he's playing ACDC like out of speakers. Like this isn't just soundtrack ACDC. Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody, uh, the, this like Holocaust survivor just like stood up to Loki like never again or yeah. whatever. And in comes like, <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Bezos like playing ACDC out loud. Like, dar, 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 dar. he's laying right in front of this dignified old man. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just can't believe that, uh, like, read the room, Tony Stark. Yeah. <laughs> my big takeaway was um, uh, Ultron was one of mine, and I was like, I think we gave Age of Ultron a bad rap. And wow. then you were like, did you watch it all the way through? And I was like, no, I've been watching it in 20-minute blocks. Yeah. And you were like, there you go. Yeah, it, <laughs> is, uh, it is a film of 20-minute of blocks. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, anything big on your, your rewatches? Uh, one of the movies I had was, as I, as I mentioned, sort of Doctor Strange. And it really, it really does tie in the, like, the loner hero. Like, he's so, they just, there's no sense that Stephen Strange has any kind of life in the movie at the beginning. He's like, we saw that shot of him like alone in his apartment with mm -hmm. the rain. It's like it, it's it's so isolating, and you mm -hmm. really do feel for the guy. And it's like he is sort of the prototypical like MCU hero. Like 
he has to become a superhero is the only thing that will give his life meaning. Mm, yeah. He's just got, he's got nothing. He's yeah. like, he doesn't have a dog. He doesn't seem to enjoy his work. He doesn't have a hobby. Nope. It's just like, man, like, thank God there was magic. But I think surgeons are notoriously uh, sociopaths. Um, That's true. <laughs> I think sure. they're kind of crazy people. Yeah. He's uh, got a he's got a, a very nice drawer full of watches. Ooh. So we'll give him that. Yeah. It's a very nice watch drawer. I guess he's he's poured all of himself into that watch drawer. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, anything big on your uh, on your not that I can think of journey the through moment, the MCU? Okay. No. Just, all right. Uh, I also rewatched the first Iron Man on mine, which is interesting to go all the way back to the beginning. Yeah. Because we were talking a little bit about it's it's uh, it's like in set in our real world. It was like the only one they really tried to do that with. Yeah, it started that way, right? Because yeah. like it's well, like I about don't... sort of Iraq and Afghanistan and the Middle East and weapons and the military industrial complex and the others are all they they have themes and ideas, but they're not like plugged into the politics of the yeah. day. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess the politics of the day would shift once aliens start coming out of the sky. <laughs> sure. and, oh, I mean, but I, I, yeah, I, what you're saying. I get yeah, why yeah. it happened. Like, after yeah. you're doing 20 of these and it's become the hugest franchise in the world, it doesn't necessarily make as much. And so they, they do try to put in, like, Are you saying that early on they were putting politics into their movies, Lon? I'm saying Ugh. that Keep I wish politics these... out of my films about genetically engineered soldiers of war. Keep I... politics out of it. <laughs> Just listen. He's Just... so tired of it. Here's all I'm trying to say is that Kevin Feige is a soy boy. That's all. <laughs> Simple point. Uh, I've got soy right here. Ooh. You're looking at a soy face. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Oh, yeah. oh delicious oh, soy. Gross, dude. Gives me strength. The never-ending story. Oh man, we forgot to say anything about the ABC shows, Netflix series, one shots, and spinoffs. Eh, so did yeah, Doesn't you. matter. I'm not gonna watch it, and you can't make us. Because <laughs> um, uh, we have so much uh, delayed scenes. Let's yeah. roll right in. Let's keep going. Screw you, cloak and dagger. <laughs> we can do no wrong. We've heard you're very good. Phase. And if rock docs have taught me anything, it's that you'll stay on top forever. Only up from here. And if yeah. rock docs have taught me anything, Phase 4 will have the MCU develop a serious drug habit and get really into jazz fusion. Uh-oh. There you and go. And <laughs> every story is full of sexless romance that never takes off. I think it was weird. You guys so have many like people get two seals fighting over a great eavesdropping. Eavesdropped on. <laughs> yes. Just after a romantic moment. You think you can stop daydreaming about my daughter long enough to get my last? It's pause. Pause. Is it weird that they, in the same way that they do the thing where they comment on the weirdness, there's a wizard and a spider. Yeah. They do the same thing with romance. <laughs> like, that's weird. Yeah, you can't. Like, they treat like we're chasing a, a squid alien with a wizard and a, an to Olympian, get a yeah. and the, they treat the same thing with like you just kissed. A person on the mouth romantically. <laughs> yeah, gross. Yeah, gross. yeah there's always a lot of like adults feeling awkward about liking one another, and it's like, no, nah, don't real, not, nah, not so much, you know. Yeah. Where it's like thirty year olds, like, oh, you want yeah, like billionaires, like model athletes, spies, <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. Like they've all done it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't get like shy about kissing a girl in front of their friend yeah. or whatever. Anyways, let's keep going. Dude, Except maybe drag. Like standing there? An hour. <laughs> An hour? <laughs> Bloodless violence that never leaves more than a couple of forehead scrapes. Look at all those forehead scrapes. Oh, so many forehead scrapes. All that for a drop of blood. And toothless comedy that thinks describing what's happening is the peak of humor. It sounds like you had a pretty special and intimate relationship with this hammer and that losing it was almost comparable to... Yeah, this run almost takes it out of context, uh, but like these are all supposed to be played as jokes in the movies. Yeah. And the very laws of physics tried very hard to kill me, but I left him chained up in Greenwich Village and the quickest way back there is through a dimensional gateway that I opened up. Jesus. Oh, I'll be out of your hair. Yeah, there's a reason like why I cut this run. That are infiltrating the long. They yeah. can transform <laughs> to any life form down to the DNA. We've been hired to stop an interdimensional beast from feeding on those batteries and I'm gonna but Marvel's like these are weird movies if we just space, say it yeah. came here to steal a as a joke a they'll accept it right. God, you told me that I had a half sister was imprisoned in hell then she returned home and stopped me in the eye so I had to it's also a good way to remind the audience what, what's, what's happening, happening. yeah robots. Uh, have a bow and arrow. none of this makes sense <laughs> starring evil CEOs Table setting. You go after This was exposition scene That's set at a table. But yeah. Yeah. It took me a while to figure out what the <laughs> was when I saw it in our <laughs> trope list. He's my brother. He killed 80 people in two days. 
he's adopted. Thanks to you, those insidious shapeshifters will threaten our borders no more. That doesn't count. They're not sitting at the table. There you go. no longer be a private organization. We've got to get to the core before he does. Hmm. You going to space? Car fight. <laughs> <laughs> I like car fight. No, should have car fight. Should have kept car fight. So many car fights. You know, you know what car fight should have been is the heroic slow mo flip over cars. Yeah. There's so also there's the there's also the like exiting a moving car to go kick ass on another car. Yeah. Like that's that's where I was thinking we could go with yeah. it. Like. Like, I was in this car, but I'm gonna jump onto your car, kick everybody's ass, and then hey, jump back show. into my car. A confused hero running out hey, into a city street. <laughs> this was something I noticed that's in a bunch of verse. The idea was to bring together Nick Fury, another of exposition of device. Yeah. People. The Tesseract could be the key to unlimited, sustainable. That'll be Not one million dollars, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council, we needed a quantum surge in threat analysis. Howard said the arc reactor was a stepping stone to something greater. We learned that not only are we not alone. I bet he was really happy that Captain Marvel gave him something to do besides yeah, walk into a room and start heroes. jabbering. They're just like us. It's like them doing mundane things. You don't see this from DC. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> They're too busy at yeah. Spencer. I mean, like, Superman like took a bath that one time. <laughs> uh, yeah, a hot bath with Lois Lane. Yeah. I'd like to take a picture with you. Yes. It's very People cool. fanning out. <laughs> I'm your biggest fan. I'm a big fan. Captain, big He's fan? I'm a great fan of your yeah. films. It's an honor to meet you, officially. I sort of met you. I mean, I watched you while you were sleeping. Disney Cinematic Revenue. All right. When Stanley met Feige. Nice rom-com. Mm -hmm. Billions. Yeah, that's <laughs> I like good. just billions. <laughs> Anything else? I think that's it. That's all. Oh, oh, okay. Wow. Sense. Yeah. Well, you it's know, I don't, I don't think much of value was lost. Um, no. Just car fights, maybe. Car fights, yeah. Car fights was fun. <laughs> car fights. <laughs> uh, well, I think we'll, let's launch into the fan questions because there's a relevant one that I liked um, uh, uh, that uh, Kevin can help on. How did you break up the workload on this one? Did we watch some assigned movies and compare notes? Or did one of us take point while the rest watched a few, like the Tim Burton trailer? Curious to how, know how you chose the tropes to call out. Thank you. This was at Forensic Chick. Uh, the workload for us uh, is, is pretty simple. We did just get all of us in a room, talk out, like, because we've all seen all the Marvel movies, the things we kind of recognized and knew that would be there. But as it was happening, we started adding things to a shared Google Doc of, like, well, it turns out that uh, everyone's got a dad problem. Right. <laughs> like, so uh, a as we all watched our respective movies, um, uh, we added more and more to that list. I'm curious is how do you handle an editing task of 22 <laughs> films at once? Well, uh, I did have some extra time in the coming weeks, so uh, when I did see the, when the trope list uh, on the Google Doc was made, I was, as it was being updated, I would have movie by movie, and I would just simply just go through and just try to quickly grab them and create all these different string outs um, that would uh, include every single trope that you guys were listing, and uh, Pretty much just uh, had to go through every movie one by one, um, but I didn't have to watch okay. them. Thankfully, I just yeah. had. To, <laughs> I just had. To, you guys put the time codes and everything. I just had to quickly grow and grab it and stick it where it should have been. So, yeah. But other than that, um, and then once the yeah, all the trips are made, uh, you know, I get the script from you guys, and uh, well, usually in the beginning, like for the usual honest trailer. Like on you guys, we, we post them up on Tuesdays. You guys are writing them. Uh, usually by that time for the next one, and then uh, I get the you know I kind of know what movie's being made. I try to watch it. I go through and build a string out of shots. Usually I try to find shots for like the starring section of all the character shots, mm -hmm. um, stoic shots where they're not like, lip flabbing. Hmm. Do you that. do you like go through and look for cuz you're really good at pulling shots that sell jokes or sell mood or sell ideas like yep, do you go through and you're things. like here's a good eye roll shot and yeah. that'll probably be a John commenting on something Yeah mm -hmm. when I'm going through t through the movie I definitely um and looking for the character shots, and them also have a separate string out that I call reactions, oh, mm. and that's specifically I'm looking for the eye rolls, the high fives, people frustrated, anything that would you nice. know, embody whatever John's right. going through at the moment. And right. that's part of what I'm saying. Like it seems when you're watching on this trailer, you're thinking about the writing and the dialogue and the jokes, but so much of the comedy is that stuff. It's like 
having the music cut out at the right moment to sell the line yeah. or mm-hmm. like yeah finding the exact right moment of Thanos making the right expression and like that's where the next time you guys out there are watching it out there like pay attention to that stuff and you'll see like it elevates it so much yeah yeah, and that's just not to knock the genius work we're doing, but, <laughs> but it's yeah, mostly over there. All the timing it's stuff is, largely is stuff I've also learned over the past couple of years that I've been here editing. Yeah, um, you know, it wasn't like that always in the beginning. I had some trouble with the music, especially, but now it's kind of like uh, I kind of know the rhythm. I know when mm-hmm. to cut stuff out. There yeah. is a uh, yeah, there is a, a learning process, which leads us to this fan question at Julie Dykes: Has your creative slash writing process evolved over time, and has there been any particular input or event that made you reassess? How you went about it? Hmm. Uh, it, was, it was, I don't know. You guys are uh, newish. Uh, Joe, less so. Lon, like, the, how, uh, yeah. How, the big learning curve for me, I yeah. can tell you, was to not. And this is not a knock on those guys. God bless them, but to not do cinema sense because sure. I my initial thinking when I first started doing this was we well, watch a movie and I would just take notes on everything stupid. <laughs> and I would just be like, well, that's stupid. That was yeah. a dumb thing to say, and it, that's not that helpful. It's you got to be looking for the threads that yes. pull through the whole movie because that's what you're going to like pull out of them to make the jokes. I mm-hmm. would agree. For me, it's always a struggle um, because we are when we write these, we're coming fresh off of like one, two, if not three very close rewatchings of the film so like I could tell you uh, every single thing about the plot of the movie that is coming up uh, this next week which is going to be a wet one um, mm-hmm. uh, I can tell you everything about it but the people who watch this movie probably remember none of that right. <laughs> they remember just like basic impressions and that's our audience or that's who I feel like we're writing to is the person who saw the movie in theaters and hadn't really thought about it until the honest trailer came out like so we are not going to point out like oh well he looks left but clearly the bad guy is going off to his right because they don't they don't remember that they, right. uh, that's that's yeah. not uh, that's not their honest well, impression it, of the movie it, it also it seems like such a dumb thing to try to remember but it is a trailer yes and yeah. it's like a parody <laughs> of a of a trailer i forget that all the time because i do the same thing where i'm like uh, i remember when i first started you used to like look over at my laptop and you could just see like Giant. Final draft up, and you would just be like, "Too long, too long, the, too many because words." Because <laughs> you would just see like, "Here's this essay block of text," and like, you'd just be like, "Nope." Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can just look from a distance and be like, "That's not gonna sound like a trailer." And granted, trailers don't sound like this anymore. This is a very specific era yeah. of 1980 to In 1995, world. where they would have one of these like Guy LaFontaine or whatever yeah. do like in a world. Blah 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 blah. That's nine words right there. Like yeah. we're we're mm-hmm. making jokes nine words at a time. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, I think that's how it's evolved. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what's everyone's favorite honest trailer? Asked Legato twenty fifty seven, and I will now read the chat for some other questions. So oh, you good. guys talk. Oh, what are some good ones? Uh, um, probably my favorites. Uh, definitely the Wes Anderson. Every Wes Anderson yeah, movie. That one is like good. That one. I think we just very well done. Oh, across the board, just nailed it on uh, the writing and editing, yeah. and and our uh, voiceover guy that we brought in as well. Yeah, uh, I like anyone where we get to do something kind of weird and different. I loved having the uh, the ASL guy for Quiet Place. I thought that was really, oh, yeah. I thought that was yeah. really fun. It was just a weird challenge too, with like. Uh, no, I, was, I, I didn't understand how you translate any of that. So he's like, no, I literally have to like translate your sounds and ideas. Sorry, pause, pause, pause. Uh, so scrolling back, <laughs> uh, scrolling back through uh, the comments, uh, Rob Turner asks, why do people assume Thanos has a normal booty? He could have four butts full of acid for all you know. That's completely <laughs> fair. That's completely fair. Completely I'm, I'm going to take a little issue with that. <laughs> mm-hmm. We know that Thanos eats. We've seen him cooking for himself very conventionally. He's putting spices. He's stirring a pot. So he's got to have a relatively <laughs> conventional digestive tract. Why would he have butts full of acid? Well, though? he might have a different, you know. Unless uh, he's putting food in his butt to digest it, that wouldn't make sense. Okay, fair enough. Uh, continue with okay. your favorite Australia. <laughs> um, oh, I, just the little things like learning like that, that guy was like, oh, no, no, no. I don't just like, uh, this isn't just I say the words you said. Like, I have to sell ideas and reactions and emotions yeah. at a yeah. rapidly fast epic voice guy pace. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I really like the ending on trailer where we just change it up quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Happy Death Day was one of those as yeah, well. Yeah, I really like that one. Into the Spider Verse is another oh, good yeah. recent one that I really liked. Where that it was, like was figuring out how to integrate all those different talents in there. And and that was one where. Uh, Props to you again, Kevin. I wish you guys could just see the moments where one of us walks into the post and says, this is neat. What if we opened a dimensional portal that 
flash teases of both the actors and the yeah. character, and you're just like, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Sure. yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> just full of, uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Just full Bruce Willis. Yeah. yeah. I like uh, anything musical. That's always fun. Oh, yeah. Is to yeah. write parody lyrics, and they mm-hmm. those are the versions of the songs. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a self, uh, but it's like <laughs> the versions that we write are the ones in my head. Well, anytime. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Same. Same. Mary Poppins. A little bit. Yeah, the Mary Poppins <laughs> versions definitely got in my head. Yeah. I will also, on a personal level, just say Jumanji because it was the first one I got to like write the first draft myself. So personally, mm-hmm. it feels like which, a really which good. Which Jumanji? The the Robin Williams Jumanji, okay, nice. not yeah. not. Not the rock. and uh, yeah, and then like the um, what's the greatest showman? Oh yeah, uh, because we just had we just pulled people from the office and gathered them all in a room and made yeah. them sing. And Matt Citrone, <laughs> yeah. our our music guy, was like directing them, and that yeah. that was really fun. Uh, Jinxie asks, "Why are we still wearing headphones?" Good question. Oh, fair, yeah. very um, fair. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. Do. Don't need them. Okay, Don't we need, need to wrap it up. So just a couple more. Um, do we have a least favorite honest trailer? Uh, I have one. It was for the second. Planet of the Apes, like good Planet of the Apes movie, where Dawn, Dawn or Rise, I always get yeah, them confused. Where too. that's the Rise. We rise so clearly terrible. have nothing funny to say yeah, about it, but it was like, just like the one movie that people wanted and was out that week. Like mm-hmm. it was the one where the the, uh, the Gary Oldman ape, the, one, where right? the ape had two two guns on horseback, like riding around shooting it, and like you can tell maybe three or four times, we're just like. That, was, that part was cool because we had absolutely <laughs> nothing else to say. That's a. I think we've gotten better at it, or just like using movies as an excuse to talk about other interesting things if there's not much interesting going on with the movie. But like, the best movies don't make the best honest trailers. That's like, that's mm-hmm. a, like people always. When they when we put out like what all time movies would you want to see us do? People always request like great move like Groundhog Day. And it's like yeah. nah, there's there's a lot less to say. It's much easier to do. And especially ones like, that are like right just that are good that are just entertaining, but not because great ones I think are actually easier than ones that are just good. That was a good movie. Yes, because like, mm-hmm. the honest take which we try to do is uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's good. We try to just say it like it is. Yeah, I feel like I can't think of one that I. Outright was like, Bruh. yeah. I know there's a yeah, lot where we're way. like, okay, moving on to next week. Like, yeah. we got it done. Cool. <laughs> yeah, like, there have definitely been some that were more struggles than others, but I think they always come out. Yeah. You know, I don't watch them and be like, Ugh, we really dropped the ball. There's on always this one. one thing that makes me chuckle looking back, yeah. so I'll mm-hmm. take that. And I'm told it's time. So yeah, we're getting, uh, we're this uh, thing. Uh, I hope we've done one thing that made you chuckle today. Uh, I saw one other question. Will there be an SJU today? Yes. We're just right going to keep the cameras going right now. Hi. <laughs> That's why we have Welcome to, get to SJU. Here. Uh, but thank you so Kingsman. much for sticking with us this long, for sticking with us through 300. Yeah, Here's to guys. 50 more. Ooh. <laughs> 52, 100? I don't know. Uh, uh, a, little, a little job security. Let's say 100. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's say 100. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I want to set expectations low so we can always oh, uh, climb over them. Is this how I find out? <laughs> <laughs> have f- four more to go. They four only made a hundred more months. movies, Lon, so we can only make a hundred more of these. Now it's going monthly. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us. Kevin. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for doing it. Me. We couldn't be doing what we're doing yes. without what, what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, seriously. Um, thank you. The unsung and, hero. Uh, Hold me. Yeah, for sure. Dan, right. Danielle, John Bailey, of course, all the people who made this happen. Uh, thank you. And fans like yourselves. We'll see you next week for, again, something very wet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>